Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have a review of Anansi Boys by Neil Gaiman. This book follows the story of Fat Charlie Nancy, whose father is the god Anansi and he has recently died. Upon his father's death, Fat Charlie discovers some a secret that he didn't know about from his father's past and it sets him off on this comedic adventure. This book is a comic fantasy novel and I have to say that I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, Neil Gaiman is a writer whose works I have enjoyed for years now. I think the first one I read was Stardust. That was when I first discovered that he existed because of that film with all those people in. And Anansi Boys, it starts out and it seems like a very mundane story really. If you're looking at an urban fantasy novel for where a normal human being gets thrust into a mystical world, then this is probably, Fat Charlie and Nancy's world is probably the most mundane and normal that you are going to get. I know we had Neverwhere and we had American Gods where they're both about characters experiencing some sort of normality before they go into finding these mystical worlds. But in this one, I'd say that Fat Charlie and Nancy has the most mundane of lives. He works for this Graham Coates at an agency who like deals with money for celebrities, families who have died, and you know, royalties and all that fun stuff. And he answers the phone each day. He has a girlfriend called Rosie. And he doesn't recall much of his life, except that he didn't really like his father, which sets off this whole thing of issues about when he has to go to clear his father's home and he has to meet these older women um, who know who Fat Charlie is and they know um, who his father was. And they were very much the fates within this story. You know, we get the women within myth and legends that reoccur. We have the fates, we have the three witches in Macbeth, and I, and I imagine that there are a lot more th from different myths that I don't know about. I feel confident that I'd heard the name Anansi before. I mentioned in a previous video, I am sure that he was mentioned in, well they, I don't know, they were mentioned in a book of myths that I read way back when I was seven years old in year three and I'm sure that he was mentioned then. Um, and I liked the twist that Neil Gaiman had put here because we do with a character that shows up. Um, I can't explain why I enjoyed this book, I don't think. I know that there was definitely, at first, I was seeing a great parallel between a lot of Neil Gaiman's works. And I like the fact that he introduces us to different myths and different narratives that we may not have heard before. And one of the big things that kept reoccurring within this story was the idea of stories and songs and how every person has a song and how, um, you know, weaving all the different threads together was creating this web of a story. And I like the way that Neil Gaiman took the fact of like this great big coincidence that happens in the end and he changed it and made it fit with the narrative quite well. And I saw parallels here to a lot of the early 2000s television shows and films that we would get. Um, not necessarily science fiction or fantasy films, but about your everyday man who everything keeps kind of striving to push him down and he keeps meeting misfortune at every turn. Um, just now I ended up thinking about the, is it, is it the death and life of Reginald Perrin or the, it's Reginald Perrin anyway, which was originally done way back when with the man who was in Rising Damp, I can't remember his name, um, 
and then more recently with Martin Clunes, but it was, it just fits that sort of narrative perfectly of this gentleman who, yeah, he's struggling, his life's not going right, and then this really big opportunity for failure appears, and it's how the character combats that. I think that if we're looking at it as a narrative, then to look at Fat Charlie as the everyman um, really works as the reader's way into the story. Um, there is another character who shows up who has some sort of relation to Fat Charlie that I don't want to reference in case I spoil it, but people who have read the book will understand. And I or are going to read the book when you get there. You'll come back and you'll understand what I'm about to say, but basically what I liked within this story was the use of the duality um, of two characters, Fat Charlie and someone who appears within this book. And I liked the revelation about them at the end because to me it brought out this whole idea about twins and... Um, which I think we've seen mentioned a bit within African superstition. And I think that Neil Gaiman does actually take a fair amount of myth, legend and superstition within this book. Um, at least that's what I was assuming. Um, maybe it was wrong of me to assume and I will go and check thoroughly and leave a note somewhere maybe. Um, but also like the sort of yin and yang thing and the way that these... Um, two characters almost work together as one. I really like the way that he presented that. I liked the fact that there wasn't tons of magic within this book. It was very much more about normal magic, everyday magic. Um, I thought that it was great how they decided to, perf when Charlie goes to visit these older ladies um, to find out something and to get rid of something and they perform this ritual and they don't have all of the things that they need so someone just throws mixed herbs in and says whenever it calls for something and they don't have it they just put mixed herbs in and I just thought that it was great I thought that it was um, modern and funny and it was an extremely fast read and it's probably gone closer to the top of being more one of... I mean, I enjoy all of Neil Gaiman's, but this is probably, like, closer to the top as one of my favourites. I um, want to reread American Gods because I can't really remember it that well. Um, but this one just felt more clear, if that makes any sense. Like, it felt like it didn't have um, a lot of stuff that we needed to keep track of and really, like, holding all these things like plates up tentatively in the hopes that they don't drop it just felt like one clear narrative and I really appreciated that and I really appreciated the story and I just thought that overall it was a really good comic fantasy and I'm not sure I actually have much else to read of Neil Gaiman's work apart from his graphic novels now so we will see um if you have any questions about this book because I didn't make any notes before reviewing. How silly of me. I never do. I really should. Um, if you have any questions about the book, then please feel free to ask them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, that is all.